Hello and welcome back to another update on my small HO switching layout. Uh, quite a lot of progress this last week or so. Uh, we've been messing about with some of that. And we've been messing about with some of that and some of that. Um, very excited to use one of these for the first time. And I'll tell you more about this later on because I'm really chuffed with that. Um, anyway, less of me. Let's go and have a look. Right, so I said last time that um, the track was the next job. And as you can see, I've done some work on that. So step one, took it outside, um, bit of a break in the rainy weather we've had recently, and gave it a spray of uh, Halford's camouflage. Mostly the dark brown, um, but a little bit of the khaki as well. And done a little bit of dry brushing and, and uh, bits and bobs here and there. The ballast is uh, a jar of ballast I've got there's a bit of a mixture of stuff that I've collected over the years I think it's mostly end scale I'm not particularly good at ballasting I can't do those perfect straight lines that you get on mainline but luckily that's not the kind of scene that I'm modeling so hopefully this is okay I've also used some sieved builder's sand um, spread around in the gaps between the track with a little bit of um, woodland scenics fine turf and then a little bit of static grass and some tufts and so on as well and overall I'm quite chuffed and it's really thought I think brought the scene to life a little bit. Now, I mentioned on the first video that I've done a bit of 3D printing for the buildings I, on this layout. I've also used a 3D printer for um, this. So I don't know if you call it an auger or a conveyor, but basically what I wanted was um, something that I could unload a single grain uh, hopper with one of those under track I don't even know what the terminology is, but basically they dump the stuff through a hatch there and it gets pulled up through this auger and can be loaded into lorries there. Um, I saw a model of this um, and a couple of, or rather I saw a 3D model, an STL file for one that was quite a bit bigger. And I saw a couple of commercial ones, but they really weren't giving me the thing that I was after. So I wanted something that was really going to fit exactly into this space. So I've been on to um, Tinkercad which I mentioned before, which is a free bit of software online where you can basically create your own things using uh, circles and squares and basic shapes, cubes and that sort of thing. 
and knocked this up and printed it off on my Ender 3, so it's just a rough, um, not a resin printer, but I am really quite chuffed with how that looks because it's exactly what I was after. And the idea is, it's not been painted or anything yet, but it just sits there. And as I say, I've got a spot now on this kind of team track where I can unload my grain hoppers. So I guess another thing that's quite <laughs> bleeding obvious is uh, the vaccine. So this is a commercial vaccine that I bought online from Peter's Spares. And I have to say the service was fantastic. I pretty much got it the next day. Um, it's an ID vaccines. Um, I think it's probably an N-gauge one because it wasn't much taller than this backboard. Um, it's from their premium range, which means it's self-adhesive. So I did paint the MDF vaccine first and then stuck that on. Um, like anything, uh, I always feel like I could have done that a lot better. There's a few bits and bobs that I wasn't that pleased with. But my intention is to plant trees uh, in front of all this. So actually, you're only going to be seeing the back scene through a layer of trees. Um, and hopefully it won't draw too much attention to itself. So again, I'm quite pleased. I think it's something that's helping to bring the scene to life. And the final thing I wanted to mention really was just about the operations and the industries on this layout. So... Um, thanks for the feedback I've had on a couple of videos and Facebook posts. This track at the front here now is definitely going to be a sort of team transload track with a grain um, spot there and then two spots for box cars, flat, car, uh, flat bulkheads, whatever it might be, a, a gondolas, that kind of stuff. Um, I've got this warehouse at the back which has got two spots for box cars and at the moment I've got this building that I've started to print here which I'm using for the all-door cars but I'll come back to that. Um, what I'll do is I'll finish this bit of switching, clear those cars out of the way so we can have a look at that spot. Right, so this industry here, I mentioned I'd knocked up this building using 3D prints and the idea was that it would be a spot for the all-door cars. Uh, I'll just move that um, Perhaps have a little uh, forklift there to be able to take the pallets of plywood and so on off. Problem is, I don't know if you can quite see it from that angle, but it's on a little bit of a curve here. And although it works and um, it lines up quite well with the, the unloading spot, I just, I'm just not entirely sure whether that's really what I want to do. So I think ideally what I'd like here, going back to Alcan Man 1's original plan, is perhaps something for shorter, like 40 foot tanks, uh, some sort of tank unloading uh, facility just there. The only problem with that is I don't have any 40 foot tanks. Uh, and things like the corn syrup ones, which would probably be ideal, uh, are really quite expensive. So I'm having a bit of a look around at the moment. So that's um a work in progress i'd say so that's it thank you for watching um you'll notice the layout hasn't got a name yet um i had thought about fairmont but it hasn't really sort of um gelled with me yet so hopefully by next time i'm not sure when next time is going to be um we've had a lot of rain over this last couple of weeks which has meant that my uh, all the priming i need to do on my war games figures hasn't been done so i haven't had a painting cue which means i've got a lot more done uh, on this layout and I've, I've been enjoying doing it actually as well um a few little jobs to do still obviously around weathering there's always jobs to do um and seeing if i can come to some sort of conclusions with that back industry but anyway 
again thank you for watching uh, and until next time take care